my crazy ex-boyfriend got obsessed with me. When they say that numbers are greatly flawed, it's not a lie. Sometimes you will get entangled with someone in such a way that you will ignore their flaws. You will fail to see who tells the truth and who is lying to you. Most likely, you will make the wrong decision. I can only hope that you will be wiser than me. For me to get to a point where I was comfortable with my sexuality, it took a lot. For all of high school, I masked it as much as I could, and my secret became part of me. Occasionally, I would have a heart-to-heart -heart with people I was close with, and I would consider letting the secret slip. It would get to the edge of my tongue, chew against my lips, and threaten to come out like a confession to a heinous crime. I would rein it in like I was taming a bull, and tell it that now was not the time. That one day, I would have a home for it, and it'd be able to be happy, even with the judgment. But then I fell in love, and I broke hearts, and I was shunned by the man who would tell me that you are just another guy who is scared to come out. I should have not gotten involved with you. I agreed with him. Everyone that I loved, I would eventually lose. No one could settle for being kept hidden as a dirty little secret, until Javier. He was the one who brought me to the edge of revealing my secret before the time. A few days before I came out, a gay guy was attacked in a gruesome way at my high school. I broke up with him as I did not want to be the next gay person beaten nearly to death. But this time, it was different. He did not shun me as I had expected. He told me that he had a feeling I was not ready, but he would be my friend. He would not have many of those, mainly because he was a rebel with a tough exterior, but a soft inside. He became my best friend, and it was so much better when we were friends. I understood that he had a darkness within him, but also that he was kind and human. So, I loved him, as a friend for many years. If only I knew the things that he was holding from me before it was too late. I would not have been ruing and lamenting years later. But what use are regrets and ambiguous messages? This is what occurred between us. I kept the promise I made to little Orlando. I would get educated, have a home for myself, and provide a safe space for myself to be who I was born to be. I bloomed, I got everything that I desired, and I came out as gay when I was in my early 20s. It got very mixed reactions. Some friends could not look beyond my sexuality, and they left. I soon began to believe that it was good riddance. My family was not that accepting as well, but instead of disowning me, they did something much worse. They tried to reason with me. I went through everything, exorcism attempts, Bible quotes about what God wanted for mankind, and prayers for my sanity to be returned. But like any small town, the next piece of gossip came, and I was left as an afterthought, picked at once in a while, when one wanted to avoid a particular topic. Javier, who was still a very close platonic friend to me, did not think that I had to take it lying down. He did not like my family in the least, or anyone who was against gay people. He was not hateful, he was just blunt about how he felt, and he believed that I had to cut ties with my family. I was more prone to be silent than active, and call it what you will, but blood calls to blood. They were always my family, and they did not exclude me, just hope for my salvation. I never had the heart to tell him that being gay was not and would never be a mistake. All along I had been unlucky with love, not always having someone serious about me. I would laugh at myself sometimes and say that I was karma for me breaking hearts like I was breaking glass in high school. But I prayed to whoever was listening. I did not believe in a God who did not love me because I was homosexual, but I dreaded thinking that we were alone in the universe. I believed in the stars, the cosmos, the universe, and that one day I would have a stable relationship. Then one day, I met someone who changed my life forever. Paul rearranged my life and heart. We met in a very weird way. We were strangers on the bus to different workplaces, but we had similar bags. There was a disturbance in the bus just as we were exiting and somehow our bags got exchanged. When I got to work, I was distraught to find that I had someone else's bag. Naturally, I searched through the bag to find out as much about this mysterious person as I could. Inside, I found an asthma pump, a journal, which I did not open, and the police badge for a policeman named Paul, the man who had been beside me. I tried my hardest to get a hold of him, and eventually, at one of the police stations, they said that there was a man by such a name there, but he had gone out, and they did not know when he could be back soon. Well, it turned out that he had found me somehow. I found this strange because my bag had just work files and nothing so personal as to identify me. Either way, he was not mad at me. I expected him to be. I would have supposed that there were many important things in that bag that he needed for work. Javier, who worked in the same department as I did, we were so close it was funny when we ended up working for the same company after graduation, was like, 
Ooh, you're in trouble with the police officer. But that was not even the case. He was very understanding and even apologized for the incident, as it was none of our faults. Not only that, he was a bit flirtatious. Or maybe I was just seeing things that were not there. But he was cute nonetheless. A few days later, we saw each other on the bus to work, and we looked at each other. It was a passing glance, but I was thinking of it a few moments after. Then, we ended up meeting several more times, and starting conversations with each other about random stuff. They were brief, for 30 minutes each day before work, but they meant a lot to me. But then, just as I was starting to get used to seeing him in the morning, he was suddenly gone, as if he'd never been there. Two days later, a note was sent to me. It said, Sorry, I did not tell you. My car was getting fixed. There was an accident which was why I was riding on the bus. You seem very intelligent, though, and like someone I would like to get to know. Would you like to hang out sometimes? I completely respect if this is overstepping my boundaries. I just wanted to take a chance. I was impressed. No one had ever shown such interest in me before. I usually had to put the effort from the very beginning, and it got very tiring. But here was someone I had been having meaningful conversations with for days, for 30 minutes, and he thought I was worthy enough to go through such effort for. He had left his phone number at the very bottom. Even though I was impressed by his bold actions, I knew that I had to be subtle when it came to him, and did not want to scare him off. So I waited two hours before texting him, like the person who cannot stick to their own principles that I am. Our conversations flowed naturally, and plans were made to meet up after talking for several days. During that time, we had both gotten to know each other, and had come to the assumption that he was gay like me. I just had a feeling. He did not share a lot of personal info with me, but I did tend to overshare with him a bit. He was always there to listen to me and I appreciated that, so eventually, we met. It was strange to meet him in an area that was not the bus, definitely more casual. My thoughts of him in the beginning were that he was very intelligent and a bit serious, but as I got to know him, different layers of him emerged. I could not stop thinking about him, for he fascinated me. Of course, I told my best friend about it. He was supportive of me, but told me to be careful because the guy seemed too good to be true. Bearing that in mind, I fell hard for him without meaning to. He put so much effort into us, remembering important information that I told him, and buying me little gifts randomly. Then, he confided in me the story about him coming out when he was in high school. This led to us bonding and becoming very close romantically. He told me that he grew up in a different state, got bullied his whole high school career for his sexuality, was ignored by his crush, and hated those years of growing up. After he shared that painful story of his childhood, I could not help but feel like I wanted to protect him in any way that I could. I was even more attracted to him and how he had pushed through it despite his struggles. A few weeks after that, we kissed for the first time. We were very bold people. It seemed that we were both waiting for the other to make a move until we were just drawn together. I saw it as a sign that my prayer for someone to love me had been answered. We moved forward swiftly after that, becoming part of each other's lives with shared experiences when we could. Then he prepared a dinner with me, with all the things that I loved, and asked me to be his boyfriend. He looked so cute and innocent when he asked me to be his boyfriend. Thank you so much, you've made me very happy today. He was beaming from ear to ear, I had just agreed. And you make me happy. I think it's a win-win, don't you not think? I grinned. A definite win, I just scored a very cute boyfriend. Then he kissed me on the cheek. He enjoyed doing that a lot for some strange reason, still found it cute. My best friend, though, was a bit skeptical about the man. He just told me to be careful because I did tend to pick up guys with issues. He used our past relationship as an example, but I quickly told him that he was being silly. He was not bad for me. I kept on waiting for the other shoe to drop and for us to be separated by something, but it never came. And I learned to just be grateful and live in the moment with him. I began to slowly trust him as he proved many times that he was who I needed. I was not completely estranged from my family. I had one or two relatives who accepted me, but I did my best to avoid any family gatherings, mainly because of the unnecessary drama that would be sure to unfold if I showed up. So when my cousin invited me to her wedding, I politely declined. I did not have a problem with her. She was one of the supportive family members. It had been a year since I started dating Paul, and we had recently moved in together. We were still at the phase where we were still getting used to living together, and it was all cute. He overheard my phone call with my cousin and asked me why I did not want to go. I did not want to delve into the family drama. I never spoke to my family about it. He even went as far as to say he would go with me. We had not gone out anywhere in ages. So I made a compromise with my cousin to show up for a few hours at the after party. 
when everyone was drunk and did not care about my presence. Javier, on the other hand, did not want me to go when I told him, but he respected my choice. So the wedding day came as promised. We went to the after party a few hours before my cousin would go on her honeymoon. We got there and she was right. The people I interacted with did not start talking about my sexuality. They were all too drunk to care at that moment. We went to give my cousin and her husband their presents, and I introduced them to him. I'm so happy for you, cuz. Maybe you'll be the next one walking down the aisle, she smiled. Yes, the two of you look great together, her husband agreed. What I liked about the both of them was that they did not care about impressing the family. They did what they wanted. We were just having drinks and conversing when Davy came along. Davy was my uncle, who was in his mid-thirties. He was a womanizer, one of those alpha males. Most of the stuff he said was cringeworthy, but he got along well with the more backward relatives. He had been very hostile to me since I came out. I tried to avoid him every time that I met him. He would say uncomfortable things about hooking me up with the right woman and straightening me out, and then howl with laughter as if it was funny. He put a hand on my shoulder and yelled loudly, Well, if it isn't Ollie, the black sheep of the family, everyone was silent, and we all looked at each other. My cousin and her husband were pulled away. They had to go. I grabbed Paul's hand and tried to get away from him, but right after they had left, he was in front of us again. So, you do not come to family events anymore, he sneered. Been busy. Won't you introduce me to your friend? This is my boyfriend, Paul. Paul, this is Uncle Davy. Nice to meet you. I think you two should leave. I do not like seeing whatever this is at a family gathering. He turned serious, and all that fake niceness faded away. No one is saying anything. We're not here to cause trouble, I protested. I said leave, or my buddies will get rid of you for me, he said. This is not your event, so why should we leave, Paul trying to be the hero, added. I tugged at his sleeve to indicate that it was fine and that we could leave. Then the next thing I knew, he launched himself at Paul. I got in the way and he hit me in the jaw. There was a scene and people gathered to see what had happened. I took Paul's hand and we got out of there soon enough. Should have arrested him. How could he do something like that? Paul was fuming. That is the mess I have for a family. Sorry, I did not warn you, I sighed. Firstly, you did not have to save me like that. I'm a policeman, and I've been trained in various kinds of martial arts. I could have dodged it. On the other hand, I completely understand about your family, he said. We discussed it for a while, then went to bed. The next morning, when I went to work, my friends asked me what was up, and I explained the situation. Javier was very upset when he heard what had happened. He agreed with my boyfriend, which he never did, and said that the guy deserved to go to prison for a day or so, or for karma to come for him. I told him to chill. I was just going to avoid my family for a while, and all was well. He did not look as if he was okay with my decision to let it go, but he listened. Later that night, I heard that Uncle Dave had been attacked, beaten up, and had a stone smashed into his head. No one knew who it was. Police were still investigating, but it was eerie how he had just attacked me days earlier, and now karma had cut up with him. The damage was so bad that they thought he would die. I wondered who would do this as everyone knew not to mess with Uncle Davy. I did not want him to die, even though he was not a nice person, so I went to see him with the rest of the family. What we did not know was that it was only the beginning of the attacks that would shock our town in the months to come, or that I would be caught up in the middle of it all, to be continued. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.